Once this is equipped, look at how fucking long he takes to put Kazooie back in the pocket. It takes forever. That's it one thing I eons. noticed. How's it going, guys? My name is Fang. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, first and foremost. Today, I have a different type of video for you guys. So if you guys didn't know, I actually am a coach for competitive Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And this coaching also doesn't just include playing. It also includes commentating and maybe video editing as well. Today we're helping out a Zero Suit Samus player, Wolfie, from Indiana, who was previously unranked before receiving some coaching. Now my dude is like top three in the state. When playing good characters, even characters like Zero Suit Samus, it's still a bit weird to know what moves you should use when, especially in some of the weirder matchups in this game. You have to learn like 80 matchups in Smash, which is kind of nuts to have to know that many matchups, but luckily you can always come back to the fundamentals and kind of approach a matchup with those before you start to get into the more advanced stuff. So break out your notepads, sit back, relax, try to get some analysis out of this, and, you know, leave some feedback in the comments if you want. I'm always trying to improve my coaching. But yeah, this is my very first <laughs> ever mm -hmm. coaching session, so bear with me. What do you hope to get out of coaching in general or this session? I'm constantly stuck in the same, like, thing, which I noticed, like... I went to a local last Friday after just winning a local. I thought I was going to go and do well. How I can like get better and try to get up there to beat Mysterica consistently. Like, that's like the goal. Like just trying to beat her consistently because she is seen as like in, in Indiana. Like she's like the top dog. Like, mm -hmm. try, like getting that win is huge, especially if like you're competing with her. When you fight someone who's like who you know is like really good, you try to play the best you've ever played and you try to basically beat them and use everything you already know as a competitor. Picture everything you know as a competitor as like a toolkit. And with all the experience you've had in competing consistently and also playing Mysterica consistently, you know what tools to use against her in your toolkit. But when the tables get turned on you a little bit, you have also your own inherent habits and flaws as a player that come out that she takes advantage of. The tools that you already have that you're using to beat her are giving you your peaks, your your set win on Mysterica, as well as the close games you've had with TM4 and a lot of other really good Indiana players. Consistency is the biggest thing every Smash player wants to achieve. Like everybody wants that one big win, but everyone wants to keep getting those big wins as soon as they get that one big win. All right, so you're you're already winning on the character select screen. That other guy, it's weird. Yeah, I can already see he's just trying to zone you out. But already, immediately, we're like two seconds in. You're using your movement to, to move away from all of his shit already. Like, you're trying to jump and, like, go over him and get away to see if you can find your opening. He's just pel he's pelted you, like, four times already. And then here, you've already dashed back, given up stage control. And are trying to use your movement to get back in. I want to test something very quickly, so... Like, I'm not gonna lie, I hold, like, a... I don't, like, trust too many people's opinions, especially, like, because I don't think they travel too yeah. much. Yeah. Like this. So when he's like, go FD versus me, bro, it's like... Oh, uh, it's like, I don't know, like, and, like... Is that like super optimal and it's like it's try it once or twice like, I, i'd say just yeah. try it once or twice see if it works if it doesn't work oh well you tried you wasted a set or two you lost a bracket set or two it's okay you can still beat him in the future it's not like you're washing him now anyway once this is equipped look at how fucking long he takes to put kazooie back in the pocket it takes forever that's one thing i noticed eons. so right here i'm holding shield one frame, two frames, three frames, four frames, five frames, six frames, seven frames, eight frames, nine frames, 10 frames, 11 frames, 12 frames. And now I can, I start my jab at him. No, not even, it's still going. I finally am able to get a grab out after that, even though it has a little bit of startup. That was a 10 frame window of me putting my dumbass Kazooie back in my backpack. You could have easily jumped over him at this point and gotten a dare out. There's a reason why Mars is mashing dare most of the time out of disadvantage at a lot of shit when he's right over someone. It's because it's really fast or it's a really good disruption combo breaking tool. When Banjo's positioned like this with Briegel, there he can't do he his jumps his his airspeed is fucking dog shit. Like look at how far I can get with just a double jump. Like, or triple jump. Like, I don't get that far. You can pick him out of the air when he does that. Obviously, he's shooting all this shit at you, so it's very linear and really annoying. I mean, look how far it goes and how fast it comes out. But if you're over him, it's not going to matter. Dare has a really good splash range, and it's a really quick option. And yeah, you're going to get hit for doing it sometimes. But it's going to stop him from abusing that move and force him to actually start playing some fucking nooch against you. Or start baiting you out, or start pivot grabbing when you, when you land. Like, it's a good option to try out that's aggressive. It's very ballsy because there is a little bit of end lag when you miss it. But honestly, Mars gets away with it like it's murder. 
There's no, he can't kill me off the shield. Perfect. That was, see, look, you did it already. You even did it here. That was so good. No. I, I right knew I dared him, him one time for it. He's locked into Briegel. He's got it. No time to put away. He tries shooting because that's the only thing he can do. Big dare. Look at how much range that has. Boom. You get a fat 13 and you get an up air string off of it. You couldn't continue it, but still, stage control, damage, damage all from one dare. All from one move that, you know, you wouldn't think to be leading you into a lot more. You already did it. You already know the sauce. Let's see if it works. He dropped shield here. You could have jabbed his ass for sure. Instead, you dash back. There's a website called outofshield.com. And we can enter in two characters. We're going to do Zero Suit Samus. We're going to do Banjo and Kazooie. We're going to get the punish options. Your strength uh as a player is thinking about what your opponent wants to do. Right, and you don't know what they want to do in this in instance, which is why you're so wary, and which this is why you're dashing back. So let's look at this: unpunishable when perfectly timed. Zare, not punishable. Nair, minus four. There is nothing, nothing Banjo and Kazooie can do out of shield to punish Nair on shield. Every normal, assuming you spaced it perfectly, which Nair, you should be spacing perfectly every single time because if you don't, you're just gonna get gobbled up. But yeah. Most of the time, even with a little bit of misspacing, the frame advantage is all, is only going to be off of a, by a little bit. His fastest option is f is nine, frame nine to punish you. Up smash. He can't do anything. You can fuck his shield. You can just pr like if he's oh. holding shield a lot, you can just pressure him. He dropped shield that first time. You should try for a jab there. You want to be aggressive like Mars? Bet Mars doesn't just hold forward. He also knows when to not press a button for a second, and then he goes apeshit on his opponent. If you don't know how to approach a matchup in like a basic essence, think about what your opponent can do out of shield, because again, this game has so many super mashy fucking buttons that you can just do whenever you want, that a lot of people are gonna do an aerial out of shield a lot of the time, if they can. All right, dashed all the way back here. Now he's got more advantage on you. And look at that, look at how, okay, that move he did, you respected the shadow. I could've boost kicked. Yeah, I noticed in the moment, I was like, I should have boost kicked the He bat, still has Briegel in his out. hand. This is a perfectly good situation for you to drop. Like, how, how safe is that on shield? I want to know, actually. Like I said, these are not things you're going to be cognizant of immediately because Zoner's whole tool is to condition you into playing either way too safe or getting frustrated when you try to play way too aggressive. So don't kick yourself for, like, not understanding this matchup perfectly yet. It's a fucking annoying matchup. Banjo's a stupid fucking bitch character, and I don't know why they put him in this game. That is minus 13 and minus 14 on shield. That is horrible. Yeah. 4 plus 28 frame startup, minus... Yeah, these are horrible on shield. You could... If he does this in your face, shit all over him. I don't know what you can do out of shield here. I think you can this do... This is only boost kick, sadly. Boost kick, turn around, Is it jab. just boost kick? That's good enough, honestly. Oh, I could do up tilt. I could do up tilt. Even if you're doing boost kick out of shield when it won't kill, it's still free damage. You get free damage and free yeah. advantage off of it. And you zared. Still kept stage control. Dash back, dash forward. You dash back again as soon as you saw the egg, even though there was no shot this egg was going to hit you. Unless you put yourself in that exact same situation. He <laughs> shot an egg. You were under the platform. You could have ran up, grabbed him. You could have done a lot of stuff here. My, my goal is grab damage. You're trying to do Zare, which is smart, but again, you backed up all the way again. He His eggs have to go off the platform, and look how they, they have a very fixed arc in front of him where they hit center stage. That egg might have saved your life. Again, another great dare. He parried it, but he couldn't parry the splash hit, and he dropped shield too early. That's a big habit this dude has, I noticed. He dropped shield really, really fucking early. You've gotten away with two dares on him, and how many dares have you attempted? You've only attempted two dares. Two. You've gotten away with two out of two dares. Like, you can keep doing it until he adapts to it. Another dash tech, yeah. Could have probably flip kicked there. Yeah. This was good. That was good too. These, these are really good aggressive things that you're doing and you're putting so much pressure on him and he can't do anything there. Like you hit him with two B reverse wave bounce side Bs and he punished neither of them. Neither of them. This guy's terrified of you hitting his shield. He doesn't know what to do. I think grab up throw might kill here, which I think you just tried to go for. That's also very risky though on high percent. So I maybe yeah. recommend that. I'd say just use your safest buttons. The kill will come to you eventually. There you go, see? Alright, can't punish that either. Even though you got the little bounce that's punishable, he doesn't have a fast enough option out of shield to punish this. Oh my god. I messed up my fast fall. I was so pissed in the moment. That's tough. That's tough. That's actually just tough. Hey guys, what's up? Fang back at it again. AKA Mr. Never Promote Myself in the actual video because I've forgotten to do so twice 
If you guys do want to catch coaching sessions, streams, or anything else, you can check me out on twitch.tv slash fan9s. I stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. If you guys are enjoying the videos, pretty much all the videos are taken from my stream. So if you want to catch those live, make sure you check those out. Thanks, guys. Also, make sure to hit that follow button so you never miss a stream. I, I wouldn't necessarily oh. discourage going back to PS2. Um, cause it's a good neutral, obviously, cause it's the best starter. You went to town, I think this is a perfect kind of pick. Yep. Alright, more Briegel shit. Dare, I don't know if you attempted Dare there, that would've been I tried perfect to dare time to go for it. Maybe a little too close. That beat it out. It got, gotta, it got my startup. You just gotta do it a little higher up, I think. You dash, okay. Again, another dash back. There. Another Ooh. one. Look at that, he dropped Boy, shield and did egg right away. And you got clipped because uh, you dashed back into it. Like if you're gonna, if you if you are going to dash back, fully commit to it. Shield, resign yourself to losing neutral. Do not try to have it both ways because this is exactly what happens if you try to have it both ways. And great nade from ledge. It's every time he does nice. that. Nice. Yeah. There you go. You punished it very adequately. There. You kept it a mid range. You kept flip kick as an option. And look, like he had no time to react to that because you want to know why he's mashing the shit out of this B button right now. Look at how hard he's mashing! You parried it. He tries to back up. He has no options here. His aerial drift sucks. His jump would have gotten caught by this. Trying to put away the the Kazooie would have gotten hit by this. This was perfect. This need this shit needs to happen more. If you have him in disadvantage and he's forcing that option, you can just flip kick. It's so linear. Um, Another great dare. This is all perfect. I'm loving everything I'm seeing right now. Oh, this is all massive. Look, and look, all this is also happening because you're on a flat fucking stage. You're on FD right now. Whether you think you are or not, oh, you're no, no, playing on FD right now. You're literally playing on FD and you're winning. You're in a, you're in the lead for the first time this set. I think. Might be the first time this set. But you're on yeah. FD and you're winning. I think that is more than enough evidence for you to pick this stage. You clearly know how to lock him in the corner. He doesn't have any platforms to bail from. They don't aid the eggs in giving them bullshit arcs that they can hit you at. I think this is a perfect counter pick for you. Look at how well you're playing when you're confident. Look at how well you're playing when you're not dashing back out of pressure. You took that damage that like a always. champ, and you've turned the tables on him so well. And you're so confident here. Yes, dude. You're perfect. That was perfect. That was so good. That was perfect. And why? You went to FD. You didn't dash back constantly. You, you shielded in moments where you had to shield, and you called out his jumps really fucking well. And you did all that because you had the options to. You didn't have to wait for him to camp under a platform, or... And he couldn't he couldn't get extensions off. If he hit an egg on you, he couldn't go for the Briegel shit afterwards. So cons consider it. Like, weaken him. You're not crippling your strength by counterpicking to FD. You're weakening him. Here it's tough because... I feel like this could be maybe a ban for you. Here on this stage, you do not have as much real estate to land on from your flip kick. You don't have, you can't really do dare at a disadvantage because the middle platform's kind of big. Projectiles galore. Projectiles everywhere. cover so much surface area of this stage and you banned two stages that would have given you more room to be expressive with your movement, to punish, to whiff punish, to circle camp. I think this should have been a ban for sure. Right. This is a good example of when to not use dare in situations like this. Like, he jumped. I think you fully expected him to pull out Briegel here because he's done that every time he's recovered. Like, he'll grenade, and then he'll shoot an egg, and then pull out Briegel. Briegel. Every time. Every time. And so I this know, was good. And it's so annoying. This was good. It's just unfortunate because he actually used his brain for once, and it sucks. But it happens. You have to just be conscious of Briegel. But look... You've punished him for that option successfully, so he stopped doing it. So that's one annoying thing he hasn't been doing from ledge anymore. I feel like maybe you could have just ran under and sharked. Or or even just locked in a shield. Like, give yourself more. Like, you don't have to also just say go all the time. Like, you can take a second to, like, think. Like, he is he is at what range here when you get hit? You air dodge? He's at mid-range right here. You tried to go for a very aggressive option when he could have done the same to you in the same distance. Here, you could have definitely shielded and felt it out. Because he was about to land on the top of that platform until he saw that he clipped you, and then he ran in for that Briegel confirm. Like, you you have the... You, as Zero Suit, can dictate the tempo of every set you play. I'm not even capping. You have so much airspeed. You have so much spacing. If your opponent isn't, like, the greatest zoner of all time, they should be coming to you most of the time, which is what this guy is still attempting to do. Even though he's zoning, he is still trying to approach you for his confirm. Yeah, yep, get, at this end. point, he is no longer spamming Briegel. You have successfully conditioned him with your dare to stop doing it. 
He has not breagled from ledge this time. He jumped on stage and landed correctly, and you tried going for a dare because you thought he was going to do it, or tried to mix him up, but he held shield that time. So, once once you have achieved what you've wanted to achieve by using dare, keep it in the pocket, but don't abuse it, because you've gotten grabbed now twice for doing it. Ouch. Yeah, yeah it I sucks. missed attack. I, I wanted to tech roll in. That sucks. That it, It's... So, how do we get hit there? I try to go for a side B, I believe, offside. Because... Yeah, side B off landing. Kind of an ill-advised read because he's not really locked in the ground there. So I think you were like, I'm about to lose here. I'm, I have to do something big to get stage control that'll catch him off guard. When re in reality, you were playing perfectly well when you weren't doing any of that. Like, your movement was great enough to, like, make him get hit a, little, a couple of times. You didn't have to commit to this. Your gameplay was really consistent, really good. You just spaghetti. You were down bad, and then you were bringing it back really, really well until that option. This can all be avoided if we take him to FD as the suit. I have no doubt in my mind. Because not only do you avoid the whole counterpick war shit, you fuck his banjo, and if he tries to cheese you with Game & Watch, fuck his Game & Watch. Not too. happening. Thank you guys so much for deciding to watch this video in the first place. Hopefully you did learn a little bit about competitive Smash and stuff like that from it. If you guys want to check out more videos, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button to see when new videos are going to be posted. As always, I appreciate all of you so much. Seriously, it's been super hype lately, getting back into content creation and just trying to, you know, grow. Anyways, that should be all from me. So have a great night, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Of weed, I need to smoke some weed tonight. Hell yeah. Because of this, for having to play Wi-Fi for six hours. Hell yeah.